I would like to invite a few volunteers to come forward this morning. I will need a few volunteers, maybe some young volunteers in the room. Who would like to volunteer this morning? Thank you, girls. Come on up. <laughs> Any other volunteers I can ask for? Let's see. Any other children who would like to help out? Stevie, come on up. Who else wants to come on up? Any other volunteers? John, Kathy, Christina, come on up. Any other volunteers? How about those are all here? Anybody else want to join in? No? Well, good. All right, you guys are all good. Great. So here's what we're going to try. It's a little experiment. Let's station ourselves a little bit more evenly. Come a little bit this way. Come on with a little line. You guys get right there. Here's what we're going to do. Christina, put the book down for me. You need both hands. Okay. You have to put the book away. Thank you. Okay, book marking. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little experiment here. What I'm going to ask you to do is turn facing in my direction to the person in front of you and just put your hands out like this. Just like that, see? Just your hands out like this, open up like this. Okay, so what you're going to do, are you ready, Christine? So what you're going to do is put your hands out like that and you're going to slap the person's hands like this and they're going to turn around and slap the next person's hand. Faster. Okay, cool, let's try it again. Let's do it. We're going to do it faster though. We can do it faster than this, ready? Are you ready? Any mark, get set, go. Okay, let's try one more time. One more time. We're going to see how fast we can do this. Ready? On your mark. You all ready? You guys in the back ready? Yeah, all right, good. Ready? One, two, three, go. Go, go, go. Okay, all right. Excellent. Now, now we're going to do it slow mo. Ready? Okay, what happened? It never stopped. It can go on forever like this, right? Why? 
because there's no ending of circle, right? But it's because the ends meet, okay? Jesus takes our end and meets it to our beginning. Because Jesus says that we can be like him, he takes our ending and wraps it around to the beginning so that there is no end to us. So that when we meet our end, it brings us right back to our beginning. All right, you guys can have a seat. Thank you for your We will live on in heaven until the day when Jesus comes again and remakes the earth. Our reading from the book of Revelation this morning describes the end of a vision given to a man named John. In this vision, Jesus has returned and everything is being remade by God. In some ways, this is Earth 2.0, the latest version of God's creation in which what is good from the old version has now been saved and brought forth into the new version. And wow, check out what's new. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, the Bible says, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This new city that comes down from heaven is filled with none other than the saints, not the football team, but all God's people. They do not suffer anymore because the world that once resisted their efforts to be holy has been rebuilt to welcome them. Church say, I want to be free from suffering. And just as it was in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, the saints are finally able to live with God again. God's home will not be in heaven with ours on the earth anymore. Instead, God himself will be with them, among mortals like you and like me. Like two friends that had once been fighting, but now have forgiven one another, there will be no sin or frustration between the saints and God anymore. The saints will enjoy the openness that comes when we can just love each other. Saints, would you say, I want to live with God again? I want to live with God again. So guess what? When the saints are fully connected, when the saints go marching in, connected to God again, and there are no more obstacles, then death will not exist anymore. In Earth 2.0, saints don't run on batteries that need recharging. It's more likely they are plugged into the wall. Amen? God is the source of light and replenishes them so that they can go on and on and on and on and on forever and ever. Church say, I want to live forever. I want to live forever. Well, church, if you want to live forever, connected to God in ways so beautiful that they are beyond our imagining, then I have some good news for you. According to the Bible, a saint is anyone who has put on Christ. Every baptized member of the church that has put their full faith in Christ whose lives are being reshaped in his likeness, is already a saint. Some people believe that saints are just people like Mother Teresa, or Jesus' disciples like James and Peter, or people like the Apostle Paul. But Paul himself, when he writes to the different churches in his time, writes directly to the saints that are in Ephesus, Corinth, Bayport. You plug in the blank. Paul's understanding of who the saints were is that they were every person who is seeking to be like Christ in their whole heart. The saints weren't perfect people. Only Jesus was a perfected person. But the rest of us struggle with worries and doubts and despair, do we not? When we encounter, then, sickness and brokenness and pain in our world. But if we press onward, Jesus wants us to know that the time is coming when none of that will exist anymore. And it will be just like the saints and God. Everybody say, thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you so much, Jesus. There is a beautiful church in Wilmar, Minnesota that illustrates this very nicely. It's called Vinjay Luther, Vinji Lutheran Church. You see, when they built their sanctuary, they built it into a circle. And around that circle are two ribbons of wood, which you can see just above where the people are. Does everybody see it? Do you see it? The bottom one consists of wood letters that spell out the incredible hope from Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely. 
And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. It's a good thing to have a big sanctuary, right? Okay. But just as the verse ends, it closes the circle. A reminder of God's everlasting promises to them and to us. Then just above that, there is a list of saints. Starting with Adam and Eve, through Noah and Abraham and Sarah, and Isaac and Rebekah, and Jacob and Joseph, and Moses and David and Elijah and Isaiah, and Mary, and Peter, and Paul, and John, and Augustine, and so many others, right up through the ages. And then, just before it reconnects with the other side, to close the circle around the room, in that very spot there lies a space. The architect of the building intended for everyone who looks at that blank space to know why it was there, and what it is that would fit there. The words you can't yet see are the words, you and me. There is room in the new heaven and the new earth for you and for me. We are the saints of this generation, waiting for Christ to come and to take us to our new home, as have countless generations of men, women, and children. We hope one day to sing with them of the goodness of God, to magnify the name of Jesus with every fiber of our being in recognition of what he has done for us. And no matter how good your voice might sound now, it will sound perfect in that choir. Choir, say amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> because your voice will ring with the sound of God glorified, echoing through the resonant chamber of your life. Church, say this with me. I'm going to sound awesome. I'm going to sound awesome. Amen. So all that remains then is what we will do until that day comes. Will we sit around and wait for Jesus to come? Or will he find us faithful, diligently working in his fields and mountains and plains and valleys for the kingdom of God? <laughs> Church, clothe yourself with Christ, all you saints. And let the glory of the Lord shine brightly through you. <laughs> and finally, when we all see one another by the light of God, we will understand and shout together what Isaiah once wrote. Look, this is our God, for whom we have waited, and he has saved us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let's be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever mine. Though we been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We know less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Raise your hand if you feel the Spirit. Praise God, 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 praise God.
to Almighty God, who welcomes us and waits for us, who is here with us now. Let us offer of ourselves and our gifts to our Almighty Creator. 